So Black Widow wasn't actually that bad. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Ooze back again once again with another Marvel discussion, talk, review of the Black Widow movie that we just uh, came back from watching. And I, I, I'm I, kind of confused exactly what to call it because I'm going to do my best to talk about some of the things that we saw in the film, but I'm also not trying to spoil too much. And I guess just give my overall impressions and some of the things that I thought about uh, the movie. So let's just get right into it. So right off the bat, I had the impression that Black Widow was supposed to be a backstory and some sort of prequel to explain the origin of the Black Widow, Natasha. However, even though it technically is and it shows where she came from, it actually doesn't take place at a point in time where it would fall into the whole storyline of the MCU from where we're at currently right now. And where we're at currently at the time of this video is Loki events. Now, originally the movie was supposed to come out at some point last year, and this was definitely happening at some point after Endgame, and I'm pretty sure after Spider-Man as well. However, considering that within the film, they do actually reveal that it at takes place around 2016. This would assume that we're looking at after post-Civil War events, which would mean that this was clearly before all of the events of Infinity War and Endgame. And if you have not seen those movies, well, I don't even consider this a spoiler anymore, but if you haven't seen those movies yet, what are you, what are you doing? She dies! Currently right now, Black Widow is deceased. She died because of the retrieval of the Soul Stone. But there's something that I actually wanted to talk about, which I guess would be a little bit of a spoiler territory thing, but we're gonna talk about that later in the video. To give you guys more of exactly what it is that I liked about this movie to make it something that I would feel comfortable enough recommending to people that were unsure or were just kind of passing off on this movie, I really did enjoy it. And I enjoyed it for the story. I enjoyed it for, you know, how everything kind of like came full circle in a way and everything that the movie introduced, it introduced some things that were very new that we don't, I don't think we've ever seen in any of the other movies and TV uh, shows so far. They touched upon some things that, like I said, I don't think were ever brought up like with all of like the Black Widows and where they come from and whatnot. They, they probably alluded to a little bit with just, you know, Natasha specifically, but I never knew she had a sister. I never knew she actually had a family. And I never knew on top of that, she was adopted and was part of like some grander mission that was going on way behind the scenes and behind the curtains. This movie basically uh, turns out where we see a lot of, well, uh, the first opening scene is just a, a huge chunk of time is dedicated to showing Natasha as a child alongside with her sister and the whole theme of, you know, they'll never leave each other. But clearly with some of the things that happen that you see in the film, at some point, I mean, it's a given, you never hear or hear or see Natasha's sister ever up until now. It also alludes to the whole um, family narrative and, you know, this theme where Natasha didn't really have a family, but her family right now is the Avengers. And then at the same time, it's like very contrasting, I guess, because there's moments where they even question her being like, oh, well, if they're your family, where are they at? And that's a really good point because at this point in time, I'm pretty sure Cap was in Wakanda hiding because of all of the recent events that happened in the Civil War at that time, which if you forgot about that, uh, it was, you know, Iron Man squad, Cap squad going head to head. It's also where Sp Spider-Man was introduced for the first time. Pretty sure Black Panther was also introduced uh, during that time as well. So if you haven't seen that, man, what, what are you guys doing? Just watch these movies. Now, aside from the story being pretty cool, I did enjoy the action that we got. Uh, we were, it was really dope to see. It, all, uh, it made me forget that Natasha has these like punching glove things that shoot like rings of energy and i almost forgot about that and i feel like the last time i saw that was probably in the marvel's avengers game that was made by square enix and since then i didn't even know then that she had something like that and if she did i don't know how i missed out on that because i've always seen black widow as one of those like really od over the top spec ops kind of like secret agent kind of individuals where she was super you know super highly highly trained in combat and you know being able to like sneak around do all this kind of crap that's how i always looked at black widow not to take anything away from her but i mean she can be in my opinion very forgettable when you're putting her up against characters like iron man thor the hulk cat like 
not gonna lie, but this is kind of a good transition into what I wanted to talk about. Some of the things that I was actually worried about with this film. Now, being a Marvel fan, um, I obviously would be very sad if they ever produced anything that was subpar or something that I didn't enjoy or something that just didn't really continue to add to the, the charm that the MCU has right now. MCU is, in my opinion, undefeated. I feel like every single movie and TV series that they came out with since the post credit scene of Hulk, because that's where all of this started. I have been enjoying every step of the way, and I'm sure that there are some that I've definitely enjoyed more than others, but I don't consider any of these films and TV series to be bad. And with Black Widow, and kind of like how I was already hinting at prior to setting this whole transition up, is that movies that are starring Black Panther, Spider-Man, Captain America, Iron Man. You even give some solo films to the Guardians of the Galaxy. You're giving solo films to Ant-Man, who I'm not even going to lie, I did not know a single thing about Ant-Man going into it. That was probably the one film or set of films that I was expecting to just be flat out terrible. Because I'm like, how are they going to make this interesting? How are they going to make me care about it? And they did. I thought that something similar was gonna maybe happen with Black Widow because I just look at her in comparison to all these other characters that have been in the MCU playing these super duper big active roles is like, how, how like, there is no comparison. I mean, Black Widow, Natasha has always been featured in a lot of these films, especially with, you know, Captain America, and obviously the Avengers films and obviously in Civil War and whatnot. I mean, Civil War was basically Captain America 3. I don't I never see it like that because it's like, I feel like you could probably consider it like Avengers 2 and a half. I forget exactly where the, where the timeline of those movies fall into, but that's kind of like where my head has always been. That's how I've treated Civil War. Like, I don't consider it a Cap 3. I consider it like, this is basically a mini Avengers movie. They're just fighting each other. Like, come on now. But back to my point, I really do feel like Black Widow is the kind of character that I would have at least expected a TV show. And much like her counterpart and like best friend, Hawkeye, Hawkeye's literally getting a TV show. And that's where I would have expected to see Black Widow make appearances, but obviously she's dead. <laughs> So with all that in mind, I was, you know, again, I went into it with a very uh, positive, positive notions that this would be good. I, I figured and I and all of my faith is with Kevin Feige and all of the production staff and everyone that has anything to do with any of these films and TV shows. They know what the hell they're doing and they've proved it to us time and time again. And I was not upset with the outcome of the film. As a matter of fact, I am now more confident than anything else because now as more movies and TV shows come out, we're going to be seeing a lot of unfamiliar characters, especially for me. Like I never heard of no Shang-Chi. I never even heard of the Eternals. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I never even heard of the Eternals until I saw the announcement that there was going to be an Eternals film. Okay. There's no reason for me to hide this, okay? Like, I'm a big Marvel fan. I love these films. But, I mean, I obviously, I have some favorites here and there. But as far as, you know, this MCU goes, there's going to be a lot of newer additions that, quite honestly, I'm going to go into those films not knowing a single thing. And that's totally okay. Because sometimes, and some, I guess, this kind of transitions to some of the bad things that um, happened with Black Widow is that sometimes they don't really necessarily adapt what comes from the comics all too well. And I didn't really have this problem because again, I don't really know much out of some of the events that happen within the comic books in Marvel, especially with Black Widow. I've never, I've never read, I don't even know if she has a single, does she have her own issue? Like I have no idea. But what I do know is that Taskmaster is definitely a favorite villain in the Marvel universe. And yes, Taskmaster was basically one of the main villains, especially where all of the fighting and all that action was happening. And it turns out from my understanding, and this is not from my own head or, you know, whatever, but I've been told from fans that know a lot more that they apparently did not do Taskmaster justice. What's even sadder that apparently they're never going to bring that character back in any kind of other light ever again. And that's very sad and that's very unfortunate because I remember Taskmaster mainly from like Spider-Man and the video games and whatnot. So that is probably one of my least favorite things that I would have to say about 
that is even though I wasn't affected generally, right? The fact that I would be, I know that I would have been mad if I had more knowledge and I went into that film and saw that and see how they handle certain characters, I would have definitely been upset. With all of that in mind, I definitely want to just wrap this video up by saying I would definitely give this a solid 8 out of 10. I enjoyed it. Uh, it. It exceeded my expectations. And it's unfortunate that right as we saw a little, you could call it like a mini arc uh, for Black Widow that took place right after Civil War for all the events of Endgame and whatnot, it is unfortunate that she had to go. But the thing is, is now, and this is this is the first little spoiler warning if you haven't seen the post credit scene or the mid credit scene or whatever you want to call it, this is your warning right now. Her sister goes to visit her grave, right? And I thought that was a really touching scene. I didn't expect them to do that. And it was like a really harsh reminder that, uh, yeah, she's dead. And with all everything that's been going on, everything that they've been setting up for, you know, these variants and a multiverse and whatnot and all these different timelines that are now, they're going to start slowly making their way into being like the constant ongoing uh, theme with this phase four of the MCU and on, I would imagine. I would have expected to see something along the lines of maybe we'll possibly see another Natasha from another universe at some point, or maybe there's something that we don't fully understand with exactly how that soul stone worked because the one character at the end of the Winter Soldier and Falcon show, there's a character that, and I forget her name, but she was on Seinfeld. That's all I could tell you guys is that it seems like she's trying to recruit her own little team of, I don't even want to call them misfits because I don't think they're misfits. I just think they're misguided. Okay, and that she's going to kind of steer them in directions that she wants them to go in and help her do some dirty work. And whatever that is, I don't know. And if you want to consider that being her first appearance, because technically that should have been her first appearance. But realistically, because of COVID that screwed everything up, her first appearance was that towards the end of uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier show. And we saw basically towards the end of that, that she's going to be working with the false Captain America who was Cap during that show's uh, time period. I already forget his name. I think it's like John or something like that. But she already got him. Let's say COVID never happened. I feel, and, and you know, and all the movies released when they were supposed to, that would have been our first time seeing her that character and her recruiting Natasha's sister. And the motive is that she's trying to get her to take out Hawkeye. Because as far as they're concerned, the way they understand it is they think that Hawkeye killed her. Not actually what happened. What actually happened was Tasha, of course, sacrificed herself for the Soul Stone so that they could, you know, complete the mission and bring everything back to, I guess, oh, the way it was, so on and so forth. And that kind of sets up a really dope thing because Hawkeye is getting his show later this year, of course, as, as long as everything is still uh, coming into play because right now Loki is about to have its last uh, episode right before What If starts, and then apparently Miss Marvel is getting a show before Hawkeye. I I totally forgot Miss Marvel was gonna get her own show. I thought she was gonna be getting her own movie or something like that. But that goes without saying, guys. There's a lot more amazing Marvel related cinematic or TV series to look forward to. And but as far as Black Widow is concerned, it again, yeah, I hate death and. It was, it was sad to even be reminded of her death. But it was really cool, I guess, to see Scarlett Johansson reprise the role one once again um, for this standalone film. And it just goes to show you that they can basically take whatever character and really make you care about them and everything that they have to offer and bring to the cap to table. Because at this rate, it's like, damn, why don't they just give my man Hawkeye a, show, uh, a movie too? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really and I really do feel like they could... As long as they, you know, want to, obviously. I mean, I mean, where, where is my other Hulk movie? Come on now, my man Hulk. They've been, they've been freaking dissing my man Hulk for so long. They need to give my man Hulk another freaking movie. I know She-Hulk is gonna get something later down the line, but Bruce Banner, show him some love. So, anyways, guys, that's pretty much all out of me. Thank you again for watching, and uh, hopefully, you guys, if you haven't seen Black Widow, maybe this will give you a different look or a different feeling as to maybe giving it a chance i do know that it is available on disney plus if you're not comfortable enough to um venture off to any theaters that are supporting it but um definitely check it out because i like i said i do believe it was a good it was a good movie it was a great movie i enjoyed it 
and uh, not too many bad things to say. With all that being said, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, all that good stuff. Supporting links are going to be in the description as always. Make sure you guys take care of yourselves. Make the proper take. Keep it locked, loaded right here on this channel. I'll see you guys next time.